everyone, it's Hannah here from Hand and Crochet and today we're going to be making my Widcomb corner to corner hat which is a brand new pattern. I've been working alongside Brianna of Brianna K Designs and Michelle of MJ's Off The Hook to bring to you different colour work ideas and different techniques of making hats and we would so love you to join us. I'll put all the details below of the, the cows that we're doing um, and if it's still running then do come and join us. If not this this tutorial will take you through the whole pattern and show you how to make this really sweet little beanie. It comes in sizes baby through to adult um, and yeah it's great fun so let's get going. To make the hats I've chosen to use Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight by We Crochet um, and it's a really nice yarn to work with and it comes in loads of different and lovely sort of heathery colours as well so there are lots of different options for you to choose from. You'll also need a 4.5 millimeter or G plus crochet hook. And this is my cookies and cream streamline swirl from Furls. You'll need a pair of scissors and you'll also need a needle to uh, work in your ends. Um, and the other thing is if you want to pop a pom pom on the top, then you'll perhaps need a pom pom maker or some pieces of card if you want to go old school. So the first section of the hat that we're going to make, or the main body of the hat, is basically going to be a rectangle. It's going to be using the corner to corner technique, which I will show you in a moment. But the most important thing that we need to get in our heads is how to read a corner to corner chart. So some of them have numbers along the side, some don't. I, I've put numbers along the side just to help you navigate where you are. And you'll need to find either the PDF or the ebook or on my blog where these charts are so that you can follow because there's a different one for each different size. So just select the size. We're gonna do a baby one now. And I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see all the numbers. So they work in diagonal rows. So you're not going up and down, you're not going back and forth, we're going diagonally with these corner to corner charts. And so row one here, every odd numbered row is going to be read from the top down to the bottom and every even numbered row is going to be read from the bottom to the top. So row one here is going to be, it's an odd numbered row, so we're going to read from the top here down. So we can see we only need one block, one tile they're sometimes called, but in this tile I'll call them blocks, I think that's easier. So we'll work one block here of corner to corner and then we're onto row two, we've got one, two blocks in that second colour in your colour B. And then for row three, odd number, so we're going to work downwards and that's going to be three in your colour B. And then similarly four, you're going to work upwards, one, two, three in colour B, and then we have one in colour A. And so you just work all the way along. And so I would say, if this is your first go at corner to corner, it would be a really good idea to print it out and then check the boxes off as you go, because then you know exactly where you're at and exactly whereabouts and where you leave off as well. Because I know you can tell from looking at it and as we create the fabric, it will become clearer um, how the chart works. But I do find that either you can do it digitally, you can um, use your software and you can highlight boxes that you've already done, or you can print it off and you can tick it off, whichever works for you best. So, that's just a whistle stop tour. We will obviously do in more detail um, as we go along how the technique works and how we're going to create this hat because hats are not flat. I realise this, but we start off with this one being flat. So once you've chosen your colours and you've got your chart ready, you need to um, decide which one you're going to have as A and B. So I'm going to have A for my white and B for this heathery, uh, greyish heather colour. And so all the black blocks on the chart are going to be colour B and all the white blocks are going to be colour A. So our corner to corner technique, we're going to be using um, half double crochet stitches, I'm speaking in US terms here, half double crochet stitches for this whole pattern um, because I just really like the way that it gives you the texture because you've got that extra loop, it just looks really nice. So we're going to begin with a slip knot on the hook and then you're going to, we've not got long obviously, <laughs> we're going to chain four. And then we're going to work a half double crochet in the third chain from the hook. 
and in the fourth chain from the hook. And that is a block made. So each block that you see on this chart is that. So two half double crochets and a chain two. And so the, the trick to reading the charts and creating corner to corner is knowing when to increase, knowing when to stay the same and knowing when to decrease. The other trick to know is about changing colour, which I will show you when we get to that point, because it's a really neat way of keeping it really neat and tidy. So row two is going to be after we turn our work. It, it gets easier as it gets bigger, actually. Um, and so all the even numbered rows are going to be read from the bottom to the top. So we have one, two in colour B. So we begin because we know we need an extra block for this one by chaining four, because that will help us increase. And then you're going to work a half double crochet in the third and a half double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. And then we are going to slip stitch into that chain two that we have there from the previous block of the previous row. We're going to then chain two and then you're going to work two half double crochet into that same chain two space. And there you have your two blocks for row two. And then we're going to turn. And for row three, we're reading the top down. We're going to one, two, three in color B. So we know we need more. So we're going to do an increase by chaining four and then a half double crochet in the third and in the fourth. And we carry on as we did, we slip stitch into the next chain two space. We chain two and we work two half double crochets into that chain two space. And then you do the same thing again but into the next block, slip stitch, chain two, and then a half double crochet, and a half double crochet to make that next block. And so that's three. And now we're turning. So now for row four, we know again that we're still gonna increase. So we have, for row four, we have one, two, three in color B, and then one in color A. So we work ahead as usual with a chain four and then create a block into that chain four. Block number two. And then block number three. Now we know at the end of this block we need to change colour and work one in colour A. Now I've done lots of fiddling around over the years um, to try and make the changes of colour really neat in corner to corner and the best way I've found is not to um, slip stitch directly as I'll show you here, as you would normally if you were joining, because this is this is the wrong side of our work. So this doesn't matter, especially with a hat that's gonna it's gonna be hidden this side. We don't need this to be a neat, neat change. We want the other side to be a neat change, and we want to have all of our working yarn on the wrong side. So my best version this is gonna look really strange, um, but we have this yarn working here and we pull through here to start the next block and you chain two and you can hide that yarn there and then we work a block but just in our next colour and then when we turn we have a really nice neat colour change there you see so now you just need to make sure that your balls don't get in a tangle. 
but as we're only using two colours, it's fairly okay to, to keep track of where we are. I would untangle at the end of every row though, if you do get in a tangle. So now we're on to row five, which we have here is a A, one A, and then four B. So we chain four, because I'm gonna show you this because the color change is different on a right side than it is on a wrong side. So that's one in color A, and now we need to change to color B. So instead of going through the front to pick up your yarn for the right side, I'm actually gonna suggest we go through the back, which sounds all sorts of strange, I know, but I promise it really helps. So you're going to pick up the yarn that you, the color that you want, and you're going to pull it through like that. And that just stops you getting, that keeps that color solid there. It stops you from getting a little tag that you would get with a slip stitch. If you would prefer to go the um, traditional route and go slip stitching and, and, and not do it this way, then please feel free to, because it is fiddly until you work it out, basically. Um, but I do find it works really nicely. And so we are going to now work two half double crochet into that, create your next block. And I have caught my yarn A at the back here, at back there, but you don't need to worry too much about that because you know the bottom of this hat is gonna be solid in this color B. So we know we won't need it until this kind of point of the next row anyway. So then we know we've got another three blocks in color B. And so if you're using the same color, then join as you would normally. Because it's a lot quicker. <laughs> Even after many, many joins of the other technique, it's still a lot quicker to do it that way for me. And so there we have our five blocks for row five. And so then we'll do a couple more just to show you all the color changes still. So for row six, we have one, two, three in color B, two in color A, and one in color B. So three, two, one. So we are going to turn our work and chain four. A half double crochet into the third and the fourth to get that increase there and then join normally if you're using the same color So that's the three that we needed of color B. And then we're going to make sure that that cut, we're on the wrong side. So we're gonna make sure that that um, working yarn there comes in front of us. And then we get our yarn A ready to join. And this time we go through the front here, but join your yarn like that. You're going to cover that all up and again, this, this may take a bit of um, experimentation, shall we say, um, to make sure that you get it right. And also it doesn't matter if you find a better way of doing it, then do it your way. Absolutely, it's like anything in crochet, just find what works for you and do it. And so then we're going to chain two and make our next block, but we are gonna catch yarn B in this one because we know that we need it up here. Um, which is why reading ahead, actually, especially when the rows are so short at the, as they are at the moment, reading ahead is always useful. So that's one block made, and you see how nice and neat that is at the front. And then we are, we are working into a different colour, so bring your working yarn in front, pop your hook through, and it feels very strange, but pop it round like that and join your colour there, and I promise you it will look neater. Chain two and work your block whilst carrying 
your yarn. And then our final colour, bring your working yarn to the front, which is actually the wrong side, but the front of where, what we're doing now. And then join here. Very strange, I know. And then just give a tug to make sure that that closes nicely. It gives you a much neater finish there and then work into that to chain two for your final block. And so there, how nice and neat does that look? So that's six. And now we start seven with a top down because we're odd. One, two, three, four, and then one, two, three of B. So we need colour A already. So this is going to be the seam. So I do complete the block with the colour that I have. Um, just because that makes that block look neater. And then we can just go for it here with your new colour. It does mean that you have a teeny little fleck of the colour B there, but as the seam gets done, you won't notice it. And as it pulls down, you don't notice it either. So we are, we've got four of these for, the, for this first one. So we're on the right side. So we're going to pop our hooking from the hook in from the back and yarn over and pull through. Create your next block. And at this point, I'd catch in yarn B. So it's flicking all over the place. I hope you can see, okay. And then hooray, we have the same colour, so we can just join normally. But keep your yarn B in there at the back. And number four of yarn A. And then we're going to change to yarn B by inserting from the back and pulling it round. But we know we don't need to carry yarn A because this is the base, the bottom of the rectangle. And then we work away with our three by here. So here is the beginnings of our rectangle, which is going to become our hat. So we carry on increasing like this, following the chart up until this top corner. So for the baby size here, we've got row 14 as our top corner, but other, other sizes will have different heights um, and different numbers of rows that you need to get to, to your corner. So for the size that you're working, if you want to carry on up until your corner, so for a baby size, it will be 14. Um, and then I'll meet you back here and I'll show you how we turn that corner and how we make our rectangle into a rectangle. Okay, so we have got to the corner, wherever the corner might be on the size that you're making. For the baby size here, it's on row 14. So we've got 14 blocks going along here because we've increased by one block per row that we've done. But now you see row 15, it doesn't start up here and we work down. It's going to start up here at the top because we need to turn this corner. So we're not going to carry on increasing in this way. We're going to start decreasing along here but we'll get to the bottom in a moment and I'll show you what we'll do there because we're not decreasing at this bottom we're going to increase so by decreasing here and increasing here we're going to keep it straight we're going to make it into a rectangle and that's the magic of corner to corner you can make however many blocks in one direction however many blocks in the other direction by now keeping it straight by 
decreasing and increasing until you're then ready to decrease the whole thing. Hopefully that makes some sense. We'll keep, we'll keep going and it will all become clear if that doesn't yet make sense. So the important thing to know here now for 15, we're going to count up where we're at. We've got A for 1, 2, 3, 4 is the most important thing to start with. And so we don't need to increase. So we need to get to the corner here to now work down this way. So all we need to do, there are different theories about how to, to do this, but I keep it nice and tight and nice and neat by slip stitch into those two stitches that you have. And then that gets you to the right place here. And we then chain two and you are set up and ready to go and make your next block. So what did we say? We said four, didn't we, of A? So we go one, one block. That's three and four. And now before we carry on, you'll see then that this now is a flat edge for the top, which is what we want. And then we're going to change colour and we've got a B and then move along a B here and then one, two, three, four, five, six in A. So one and then six. So we've got the right side facing because we're on an odd numbered row. And so our yarn is behind. And so we're going to insert the hook from this direction and catch our yarn B. Pull A tight. And we have one block there. And then six in A. So try not to get yourself in a tangle. Join your A. Hopefully by now the colour change makes sense and you've found your way of doing it. So then we are one, two, and then six and then we're going to know that for 15 we've got one two three here at the end I know I'm counting that the opposite way but I can see that this is 15 which is why it's useful to have the numbers both sides so we've finished our, our A here and we've got one, two, three in the B to finish. And so because we know that it's the three, we now know that you're going to increase at this point. You're going to add a block down here. So that's one. two and then three so we can now see that 
we have what will be, we <laughs> sort it, there we go, um, a straight line here at the top and it's continued to, to create a straight line here at the bottom. If we decreased here at the bottom, we'd then start closing up, which we don't want to do yet because the chart tells us to keep, keep going. So for each row now, for quite some time, we're going to have 14 blocks all the way along. So it's a nice, easy way to remember it. And you're going to carry on following in that fashion, decreasing at the very top and then increasing at the bottom until we get to the corner here, until we get to row 30. So 16, we have one, two, three in colour B. And I'll just skip ahead to the rest of the row and I'll meet you here um, at the very last stitch of row 16. And so here we are at the end of row 16. And our last block is just going to slip stitch into the previous one. And then we're going to keep it flat by turning it and then repeating the process that we did here by slip stitching in these two. And that will decrease for us at this side and keep it straight because now we're on an odd number. We're on 17 and we're going to work our chain two for our first block and just start straight in there. And that's how we decrease at this end and then increase at this end now. So if you go ahead and work for as many um, rows as your chart says to get you to that bottom left hand corner and then I'll meet you back here and I'll show you by this point you'll you'll get it anyway you'll know what you're doing but we'll go through together how we decrease to form that top corner. Now we've worked to this bottom corner here so for row 30 for me on this baby size we're ending up finishing here because our even row is going to work from the bottom up to the top. So we're, uh, this is the end of row 30 for me. So we're at the top of the chart here now and 31 working downwards, you'll see doesn't come down. It doesn't increase. We decrease. So we now know we need to decrease for each row that we do both at the top and at the bottom. So that's a very wordy way of saying what I'm now going to show you. <laughs> so you're going to read the chart in exactly the same way as you have been. We're going to count up what we need to do here. So for 31, we've got one, two in A, four in B, one, two, three, four, five in A, and two in B. And as you get to the end of that two in B, it will finish just here. You won't carry on down to add another step, you'll finish here. So as long as you do the amount of blocks that it tells you in the chart, you'll end up in the right place. So if we go ahead and work that row, and then I'll show you in this corner how we then turn and carry on our decrease here to create this corner of the rectangle that we need. So here we are at the end of that row, row 31 for me, and we're just going to slip stitch into the next block as we normally would. And then rather than carrying on and increasing there, we don't have one to do. We're going to turn and perform our decrease there for our wrong side row now, which is going to be 32. And we're going to just simply, as you decrease at the top of it, you're going to slip stitch into the two stitches there along the side and then you'll chain two and you're ready to go for the next row. And that will give you this straight edge coming up here that will then meet here. So for 32 now we have one, two, three, four, five, six in B and the rest are all in A. So we'll work that and then um, we'll just keep decreasing both sides now. Um, and as I say, as long as you follow the blocks um, on your chart, you will know whether you've got the right amount or not. So that was row 32 for me and now we just carry on working our rows decreasing at both this end 
and this end and you will find it comes to a lovely corner and a lovely point you're left just with one block in this corner here for me on this size on row 43 but for whichever side you're working it will always just be this corner so for the child size we've got it on 51 and so on and so on the sizes obviously get bigger as we go up so if you want to work away and get to that corner and i'll meet you there and we'll seam the hat together and add the brim so here we are with our very very last block pop that one in and then we slip stitch to there and we have completed our rectangle. So this is going to be the body of the hat. And rather than snip a short tail here, we're going to have a really nice long tail that you are going to then use to seam the hat with. So if we pull that through and then pop it on your needle, we now need to gather the top of the hat and seam the side too. So we're going to turn to the wrong side facing. So, what we are now going to do, this is going to be the top of our hat, this is going to be the side seam, and then the brim is going to be added here. So what I found works best first is with the wrong side facing, I'm going to fold it over, and I'm going to start weaving in through here. Now these blocks are actually quite useful because I find if you go through um, in and out of the blocks, it gives you a nice even gather at the top. And it gives you some shape. I know some people don't like these um, gathered, gathered bulky bits at the top of hats, but actually with the bobble on top, I think they look quite cute. And of course you can gather it as tightly or as loosely as you like. So the style of your hat can change depending on how you seam it together. The important thing here is to make sure that you pull it as tightly as you would like it to be because once you start this side seam your top gather is completely set so pull it as tightly as you would like it to be i'm going to pull it all the way because then our bobble will go there and then i do secure over the top of it before working down the side seam because you don't want your seams coming undone hey so then the next part is to line up these sides. Now this is quite tricky sometimes. We'll weave in those ends in just a minute. It's quite tricky. The main thing that I think is the best thing to do is to line up this bottom section here because you're always going to have a band of that first colour there. And then it's very important to make sure that you line up this side and this side correctly with the blocks because this will create the pattern to make it continuous all the way around the hat. So what we now need to do is seam all the way down this side. So you see this, this block will come above this block because it's in that zigzag pattern. So we're going to seam all the way down the side. And then when you're in a different colour to the one you are currently um, using, I find it just just catch the stitches. Don't do don't do too much because then you won't see it on the other side. This different coloured yarn. So now we've got to the section of where your band and your different colour is, you've got two options. You can either carry on and do like a hidden hidden seam because this will actually be underneath the brim so you won't see it. So you could carry on sewing down to the end here or you could weave in your end here and then join your next colour, so your colour A, because we're going to need that for the brim. So what you could do is crochet this last bit together because you're going to need to be right here with um, a hook and a loop ready to start the brim. So that's what I'm gonna show you to do now, but you can, as I say, carry on if you prefer in this other color here. 
so or you can sew this section of course you can you can do it however you like seaming for me is is a personal choice isn't it like people either love or hate sewing seams i hate them um but it really doesn't matter as long as you sew the seam and you're happy with how neat it is it really doesn't matter so that's another option for getting to the bottom there and making sure that we've now got the hook on our yarn and we want it where we want it so we are now going to turn our hat to the right way round and check that you've got your pattern lined up and matching here which we do and we can't really see that seam so that's great so we've got the lines going there and up here too and we're now joined and ready to start our brim right now we're ready to start working the brim we need to do one round of crochet so we're going to work around here now and meet ourselves back here but that, that's all we're going to do in terms of rounds because then we'll start working in rows which i'll explain to you once we get there so we're going to chain one and then we need to um, look at each block here we're going to work two single crochet into each block so some blocks depending on which direction they're going in you can see here this one has got two stitches so we're going to work into the two stitches there and then this one is laying um, horizontally so we're going to work two stitches into the horizontal side of that and then the next block is two stitches and then we've got a horizontal side so two stitches so you work two stitches in each block regardless of whether they're vertical stitches or whether they're um, horizontal so let's go so one in that stitch one in that stitch um, and do pop a stitch marker in that side there if you feel like it might help you out and so the way I found it worked nicely was for these horizontal ones that you see here I put oh hello um I put a single crochet into the side of the actual stitch the horizontal side of the stitch and then I put a single crochet into this sort of little space here before the next block that worked really well for me but as long as you get the correct number and they look even and nice and actually this bit will get hidden by the brim that turns up so it really doesn't matter all that much So carry on like this all the way around and then I'll meet you back here and I'll show you how we join and do the rows. So once you've popped a two single crochet into the side of each block there, we're now going to slip stitch in the first stitch to join and that gets us back to the start where we need to be. And now we're going to rotate to work in rows back and forth to make our brim. So for this size, we're now going to chain nine. And then we turn and we're going to work back along that chain in the second chain from the hook and each along we're going to do a single crochet. And then using this round of, of single crochets that we've got here, we're now going to slip stitch into the next two. So that's one and two. And that gets us at the point where we're ready now to turn and work our next row of the brim. So it's all a bit curly and a bit strange and feels a bit weird to start with, but it will sort itself out. So the best thing I can do here to tell you here is to make sure that you get the right number of stitches. You're not going to now work into these two slip stitches you've just made. You're going to work into the eight stitches or whatever's right for your size for the brim. So now we're going to work a single crochet in the back loop only. So we've got two loops to choose from. If you turn it on its end, you can see the two and we're going into the back loop. And 
and then at the end there we turn and we chain one but I chain one that fairly tightly so it keeps the brim nice and neat and then we're going to single crochet into the back loop only again of each stitch along And so then again, just make sure that you get exactly the right number for the size that you're making along your brim. Otherwise you'll end up with a wonky brim. So we have two, four, six, and eight. So we are correct. And then we're going to find the next stitch in round one of the round we made here. And you're going to slip stitch into the next two. And then we're just going to repeat those two rounds, uh, two rows, sorry, that we've done there. You'll turn and you'll work a single crochet into the back loop only of those eight. And you'll turn and you'll keep going in this way until you get all the way around the brim of the hat. And it will work all the way around here. Come back to here. And so then if you carry on and do that, and when you get to this very last stitch here, I'll meet you here and I'll show you how we seam together and finish off the hat completely. Now that we've worked the ribbing all the way around the hat, we find that we have just one stitch left here to slip stitch to and join from the round that we did of single crochet. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna slip stitch back into this very first stitch. And that will just help us with the joining here. And so now what we are going to turn around and do, twiddle, twiddle the whole thing around, because we're now going to seam the foundation chain to the last row that we did. This is going to seam and it's going to turn upwards. So this is where we want our seam to be so that it's hidden. And the way we're working this is for every stitch of the foundation chain, you're going to slip stitch it to the back loop only. So we've got the, the front loop, back loop here. We're just going to slip stitch to the back loop only of the whole of this row. So just work your way down. If you prefer to sew your seam, then of course, go for it and sew. And the thing to remember with doing a slip stitch seam is um, first of all, how to, how to be able to sew it without tripping over it. And secondly, don't make it too tight. If you make it too tight, it will be really obvious where your seam is. Whereas if you keep it fairly loose, it won't be seen. And I find this is the best way to give you a really nice, neat finish. And just into that last one there. And we are secure. And so we're ready to break our yarn and weave in our end here. And as you see, it's not a terribly unsightly seam, but this will be at the back, so you won't see it. It won't matter at all. So we just weave in here, make sure it's good and, good and firm. Otherwise it will pop out. And then your brim is ready to turn backwards and you can't see where your seam is there. Always good. And so that is basically the hat complete, but we are ready, if you'd like to, to pop a bobble on the top. And also, I'm just going to show you how I did my little leather tags, because I've been thinking about this for a long time. Um, I know there are lots and lots of companies that do really beautiful ones. You can have um, handmade ones, you know, and um, personalised ones. But I wanted to find a version of being able to do it as cheaply as I possibly could, because I wanted to make lots of these hats for presents this year. Um, so I'll show you that in just a second, but we're going to do a pom-pom first. Okay, so my favourite way to make pom-poms is with a proper pom-pom maker. But obviously you can use um, your card, you can, you can use whatever version you like to do. You can wind it around straight card and then do it, or you can wind it around um, circles of card and do it. It's exactly the same 
um, same result. So whatever you prefer. But these clover ones are my favourites. I've had them for many, many years and they have seen lots and lots of action. And so basically what we need to do is open them up and then fill each side. My mum finds it fascinating that I wind it slightly different, differently to her. And you fill each half with whatever colour you choose. I like to have it matching the brim, but you can do however you like. And the really important thing is to fill them up. Your pom-poms will look a bit sad um, and not quite so bouncy um, if you don't really, really fill the sides up. So it eats lots of yarn, but I promise it's worth it. So this is how full we're talking, right to the brim, as much as you can get in it. I promise it will make it look much, much better. So when you've filled up, you can snip it wherever you like and then close your side and then fill up the other side and then we're ready to snip the middle. Now we've got both sides filled up and closed, nice and secure. We need to make sure you have a good length of yarn to tie around the middle and I have this ready before I do my snipping so that you can whip it in. Um, not that they do pop undone, but I just always worry that they might. <laughs> Um, and so what we're going to do is we are going to take some sharp, nice sharp scissors and you're literally going to pop them through the middle there and snip away, snip through the whole thing. If you filled yours way, way, way too full, you might find that it does start to pop undone. So you might have to keep the tension there with your hand, which is always why it's always good to have your uh, piece of yarn to tie around the middle ready. So once you've snipped everything, we're then going to slot this yarn through the middle here and you're going to secure. Now, so my other, <laughs> other path in life has been as a midwife for years. So I'm very used to, um, shall we say, tying knots and securing things in places um, with sutures. So I always double knot there. And then the key to this, I have made many pom-poms in the past where you pull on this and you pull on really nice and vigorously because you want it nice and tight in the middle. But if you pull too hard, it will snap. So as with, again, in my previous life, pull firmly, but gently. And it will work its way down and then it will not snap. If you start to feel it give, as it were, then just, just go again, just let go and then just gently tug until it works its way down. Don't force it. And then you are going to do a reverse tie and work the same again. And then a third one for luck. And we're there. And so then with these, we just pop open the sides them off because they come into two pieces very handily to get them off and that is your basic pom-pom made but obviously it looks all sorts of wibbly and wobbly so then we need to give it a good trim so you've got your two ends I leave these nice and long so that they're ready to secure onto the hat um, so hold on to these and um, my other top tip is have a tray or a tub or something to catch the fluff, to catch the ends, because otherwise it just literally goes everywhere. And then just go for it. Um, don't be frightened of taking a fair amount off. Um, and it's kind of a bit like topiary, hedge topiary. You kind of have to do a bit and then stand back and see how, how you're going, because otherwise you'll end up with a very strange shaped pom-pom. But have a good old snip and a good old fluff because that also helps it bring out bring out the uh, slightly longer bits and you can see where you need to trim and um, get the shape right. So there we have a much more bobbly pom-pom, a nice even shape. You'll always find extra, I always find extra bits that I think, oh, I should snip that. But you could go on forever and then you'll end up with no pom-pom left. Um, this extra bit of fluff Keep that in your little stuffing stash. Don't waste it. <laughs> and so now we're ready to pop it. I still managed to get fluff everywhere, even though I put a tray there. Never mind. Um, pop it on your hat. 
So the great thing about these hats is that we do have a little bit of space here at the top, especially if you don't pull them too tight. And that lets you, you could either put a popper on it, I suppose, or you can pop those two through there and then you're going to seam it nice and tightly into the top here um, and then it won't budge. And that will be your pom-pom added. The final touch I'm going to add to the hat is a little leather tag. Um, and as I um, said earlier, um, I've seen lots and lots of these and you can get some absolutely beautiful ones, personalised ones um, and not personalised ones. But I what, <laughs> didn't have time to order any, um, if I'm completely honest. So I thought, let's make some ourselves. And so I went to a local charity shop and I bought some old leather belts for not very much money and something to reuse and repurpose. Um, and so we can either use the ends of the belt with the, so the holes. So I've snipped these two bits here and that one can go over there like that or similarly. So can this one, this one's quite cool because it's already got the stitching down the side and then I would just secure it in place with um, the, the band color of yarn or you could contrast if you want, or you could um, have a plain, a uh, plain section where you decide then where to put your holes, um, which I did do for the other ones, but it really does take some fair amount of effort to get through the leather unless you've got um, a proper leather punch. Um, so if you don't have one of those, then I would definitely use the holes here. Or you could perhaps use just um, very carefully use a craft knife, of course. Um, so yeah, so pop it over, sew through and secure it and you are done. And there we have it, one finished corner to corner hat with all the bobbles and tags that you could wish for. I really hope that you've enjoyed making this with me and I can't wait to see your version. I'm really excited to see what colours you choose. So if the crochet along is still running, then please do come and join us. Please, please, please um, let us know what you're making and see the other fabulous hats in the collection too. I'd love for you to subscribe and tap the bell button and that way you'll know when I launch new patterns um, and new videos too. Bye for now.